Okay. Good morning. Um, you're all welcome to this very important session. Um, this morning, I'm going to be talking about understanding of letter of interest or letter of intent, how these are structured. I would basically be looking at some samples that I, I have. I wish I could share more, but I have to select uh, one or two to just demonstrate how um, the requirement for letter of intent and how these are structures within the framework of fundings. Um, so my presentation outline basically will be um, what donors want and you see in the bigger picture. And uh, of course, opportunities that comes out of a letter of intent. So the first one that I, I want to look at is a critical ecosystem partnership fund. These are funds that uh, are readily available. Um, the call is always annually and it's structured in pretty very simple. If you look at the, the table of contents, you will see contact summary. Um, you see the basic information, especially relating to the project. Um, you would have information on the project location. You have information on a project concept. You have information on the project partners, and that is the stakeholders. And of course, some eligibility and safeguards issues. Um, of course, the eligibility and safeguard issue basically uh, matters that relates to um, the incorporation, those things that we've spoken about, uh, and the fact that you have a very safe uh, project team that can run the project, and of course, budget summary. Um, so this is um, the how the Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund is structured. I will entreat all members to give it a try. This There is always an annual call um, for these kind of um, fund. And I think the maximum, the, the larger grant, the maximum is about $50,000, um, which will explore this. The templates are pretty straightforward that uh, we could look at. The second one I want to talk about is the FAO, um, the EU flood program. This is also an annual program um, where the FAO um, uh, share some call for concepts. Um, it is after, let me mention that letter of interests are um, some sort of summary of the entire project that you envisage to implement. So normally when you submit a letter of interest um, after a while, when you, you go through, you'll be asked to prepare the full proposal. And these are how um, proposal writing are structured. Sometimes they ask you to bring expression of interest, letter of interest, concept note. It, I mean, they are all the same. Um, once you go through that initial phase, you'll be asked to um, submit a full proposal. Um, that is when you elaborate all the um, theory of change and all those things that, that normally would require a full set of proposal. But let me say that some donors do have their own structures. Um, the FAO, they have their own structure for a full proposal. Same for um, EU, same for USAID. Um, USDA, they all have their own structure. Once you go through the initial um, letter of intent, um, once your letter of intent is accepted, you would definitely be required to um, submit a full proposal based on the structure of the project or based on the structure of the grant. So with the FAO, um, basically it's, it's very simple. The template comes with the full name, the acronym of the organization, the legal status. And again, you see that the legal status has, has surfaced predominantly. Um, then address the contact person um, in terms of the name and the email. Um, so please, every single thing that we are doing, um, 
We are doing it in line with best practices. And that is why I have always said that let's get incorporated. We simply cannot assess some of these grants if you don't have a legal status. Please, let's get incorporated. My people, we want to see ISDF work. The global team cannot do it all. Um, of course, let me go back to. So the second part is about managerial capacities. Of course, Sheila spoke about capacity statements. So this is where you just you just churn out your capacity statement and then fix it there. Here we are talking about responsibility. Who is at the head? Who is the chairman? And of course, they require some budget issues. Look. If you have never managed a project, don't worry. I mean, just indicated you are a first-time applicant. And the only revolving fund is probably an operational fund. Sometimes even less than $1,000 that you need to maintain the office. I mean, these guys do understand some of these uh, implications. Um, so please. Um, then, of course, you have the national priority. So you see that. Um, the issue of the national priority has come back. Um, I told you that let's all go and research on our national priorities. Let's research about our national priorities. If we will request for it. So which of the national priorities is the project addressing? Then you have to indicate it there. Then main targeted country, which country are you trying to implement the project? then requested FAO amount. Normally with the FAO um, small grant program, the maximum is 110,000 USD. Um, so you can request for 20, you can request for 30, and the duration is always one year, not more than one year. And trust me, you have opportunity to add staff salary, staff costs with the FAO um, small programs. Um, and that's the most beautiful thing. So if, if you want to take some of these chapters activities as a full time and you're able to win some of these grants, a lot of you could be employed by the chapters to implement some of these projects. And of course, the project title objectives and main activities. So basically, some of these things fall in line with what myself and Sheila are trying to, to take you guys through. So um, and that's in continuation, you would have something like objectives in 50 ways. You should describe it very precisely. Expected results and activities. These are exactly what, what we, we are taking you guys through. And then, of course, the relevance of the study to your national priority. What is the relevance of the study? Still, which priority? What is the national priority which the proposal is addressing? Of course, these are things you can run from. And that is why I did indicate it. Try and understand some of your national priorities. What is your country trying to address? Then, of course, gender and youth issues. FAO takes gender and youth issues very seriously. And uh, you will be required to, as well, address matters of gender and then youth issues. Um, the US Embassy Self-Help Projects, I do have the template. I'll be sharing that um, with Sheila. Um, so basically, it's, it's also very straightforward projects um, that these forms are accessible. Um, I wish I could share the forms on, on screen, but I would share the template with Sheila to um, sort of uh, share with uh, members. And of course, International Tree Foundation, they also have, I mean, these people float calls every year. And uh, it's almost the same format like that of the FAO. And uh, I would treat and treat members to explore the website of International Tree Foundation. Um, they, they are called a letter of interest and I can send samples through Sheila. It's, it's also very pretty straightforward so that you would um, you would you can already start preparing your proposal otherwise you wait for the calls and the openings um, you can start to prepare your letter of interest wise you wait for some of these openings um, thank you um, i wish all of us um, a very safe um, and good 
life as we pursue a common agenda to make sure that um, we are all able to secure funding. Um, all I can say is that please let's give this our all. Um, and I'm sure that something good will come out of this. Um, I'll be sharing a couple of samples that I've did indicate. Of course, if you structure your letter of interest or letter of intent or concept not very well, trust me, you have a better chance of going through. I have been a witness of this in my organization, tremendous growth in terms of submitting quality letter of interest. We've won a lot of FAO grants and normally we win um, the maximum we've ever got, I think, excess of 60,000 or so. And uh, in terms of uh, the African Climate Change Funds, um, we normally will submit a concept note. It's the same thing. Um, in terms of other grants, they would require you to, even EU sometimes will require you to submit a letter of interest, USAID, as I did say. So we cannot run away from some of these things. So let's take this seriously. I will share some samples with you and hope to see you on Friday. Thank you.